Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So today we are going to do something very quick and very easy. So this is the quick and easy petal cane. It gives a nice design which looks quite complex but really is very easy to do. And I'm going to show you two ways of doing it doing a Skinner blend and a pasta machine for those of you who are used to working with polymer clay. But for anyone who's brand new, this one, which gives virtually the same effect, is not using a pasta machine and not using a Skinner blend. And I'll show you that as well. So this really is a very quick and easy technique from beginners upwards. And at the end, I'll show you the other color combinations and the other ways you can put this together to give you a slightly different look. The equipment we use today is very basic and very simple because all we're doing is, as I say, a quick and easy cane. I'll be using a polymer clay blade. I sometimes refer to this as a tissue blade, a craft knife, a small roller, and something like this, which is a four millimeter cable needle. We just do that to make a groove in at one point. I work on a tile. For the first part of the tutorial, I will show you how I make things using a pasta machine. So obviously I have a pasta machine, which is dedicated to polymer clay use but I also show you how to do it without a pasta machine. So if you're doing that, then all you need is this and possibly some biodegradable wet wipes or wet cloths to clean your hands and equipment as you go along. So let's move on to the clay we're using. I'm using Fimo Soft for today's project, but all well-known and recognised brands of polymer clay will work equally well. So just use what you have. So I've gone for white, peppermint, brilliant blue, apple green and raspberry. And we've got a quarter an ounce or seven grams of all of these and then double the amount. So half an ounce or 14 grams of the Windsor blue. And this is going to be the darker colour that goes around the um, cane itself. First thing I will do is condition all of the clay in their separate amounts. And these three are going to be put into a blend. So I've put them through on setting number three. That one's going to be the, the stem of the, the pattern that goes up the inside and that's going to be the little dot in the middle. So again, I've conditioned them and rolled them out into lengths which are about three inches or seven and a half centimetres in length. This is actually more clay than we need, but this is I found the best way of doing this to give a nice result. And then the dark blue for the outside, again, conditioned it thoroughly and put it through a thinnish setting. So setting number six on my pasta machine. And that gives me a long sheet, which we can wrap around the whole thing. If you're unsure about conditioning clay, why or how we do it, then I have a tutorial on that and I'll put a link to that in the details below. Putting the other clays to one side for now, we're going to do a blend between the white the peppermint and the brilliant blue and for anyone unsure about doing a Skinner blend again I have a video with some hints and tips and techniques and I will put a link to that in the details below this. For now what I'm going to do is chop diagonally through the two end pieces straight down the middle, double them up and put them together so that this middle bit is a stripe going diagonally across the other two. Press that into place and then I will simply put it back through the pasta machine on a thicker setting. So of course I put these through on setting number three and on my pasta machine, naught is thick and nine is thin. And I'll put all the details of how thick the thicknesses are by way of playing cards in the details below the video for you as well. So because I've now got four layers, I'm going to put it up to a thicker setting. So on my machine, setting number two, put it through fold first, constantly fold bottom to top to end up with a nice blend from one side through to the other. Having got our nice blend, I'm simply going to fold it in two and put it back through the past machine, dark end first, that way, pinching along the fold until I get myself a longer, thinner strip. And this is the same setting, setting number two at the moment. And now I'm going to put it down through my thinnest usable setting. So for me, I can go straight down to setting number nine. But if you know that your machine shreds or tears your clay, simply go down one setting at a time until you do get to your thinnest usable setting. So there's our strip of clay. So I'm going to lay it out flat across my work surface. And starting with the light end, get the colour we're going to use right for the centre which for me is going to be this raspberry. And it's much wider, as you can see, than the piece I've got, and that's what I want. Um, so this is probably about an inch and a half or about four centimetres wide. And if yours is wider, then make this thinner, because you should have a bit protruding either side, just for the proportions, and I'll show you what I mean in a finished cane later on. 
So all I'm going to do is put that centrally in and just roll it and it should stick out, as I say, either side and that is fine. And I've just found it easier to have too much and then just simply chop off the excess. And then we'll push that down and that gives us the right proportion for what we're looking for. We've already conditioned and put our dark blue clay through a thin setting and again this is much more than we need but it's easier to work with more than you need and I was going to take my blade use that as a measure for either side chop that off chop the end straight and simply wrap in one layer of the blue clay press the join in and then put it down on your work surface and with something like your four millimeter cable needle or anything along these lines we are just going to press down to create a groove so you can see I'm sort of wobbling it slightly as I go just to make it easier for me and we want to go down so that we're actually starting to go in to that central core color open it up slightly and with our middle color that we're putting in just with your fingers Pinch it slightly thinner at one end because we want this to sit right down on the inside of this piece. And again, this is bigger than we need, but put your clay in and make sure it is sitting right up towards the middle of that piece. Chop off the excess. And all we're going to do now is just change the shape to make it more of a petal shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to press on either side to make this more of a point. And you can also do that by putting it on its side and pressing down on the top. As you can see there, it's starting to go to more of a point. And once we've got it more to a point, we can just start working on it, reducing it down which means simply turning it on one side after the other and pressing in along the length. I also pressed in along the two sides just to round that off. And there are so many different variations for this cane. So I'm going to do this one, show you first what it's like just as a single piece with the insert and then we'll put it into three pieces to show you what it looks like with three pieces in the middle which will make sense in just a second so I've made it slightly more petal shape so I've got a point at this side and you can see it's rounded all the way around there and we'll just chop through to see what we've got and that's how it looks so although it looks complex it's really quite easy to get that middle bit and to make it look as though it's uh, protruding into the middle a bit like an anther in the middle of a flower. So that's how it looks with one piece. And we're gonna chop this into roughly three even pieces. And then I'm gonna put them together with the middle one slightly higher up. Press them at one end, do the same with the other. And now I'm going to reduce them down to exactly the same as we did before. Pull over to create a point. Press down the sides to make it slightly more triangular you see there and then we'll reduce that down until we get to the size and the shape where we want to take our slices and then when you chop through you've got your three pieces in the petals and you can imagine when you start to layer those up how they'll look to make a nice little flower I've got exactly the same amounts of clay, the same colours as we just did, and already put the, the pink and the green into those same shapes that we had before. But for these ones, I've kept them just into rounds for now. I've conditioned it all just in my hands, rolling it around till it's nice and soft and malleable. And what we can do is we can take sort of a bit of that one and a bit of that, because it's nice to have more than just three colour variations. A bit of that one and a bit of that. And we will mix that and that into a, a new colour. So now we have a five variation of colours. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to press them down and overlap them ever so slightly. Just by pressing down. And then you can just start to roll them flatter.
and there we have quite a nice long strip with our colours going from one end to the other. And all I was doing when I was rolling was I was having the front bit or the first bit on the tile and then rolling whilst holding this up. You, just, you can just pull it slightly longer as you go and it gives a better and thinner piece. And that's all you need to do, so no pasta machine or anything. OK, so we're going to take, as we did before, our pink, put it in the middle and roll it around. You can see it looks very similar. And then this piece, again, with my hands, I'll get it into the right shape and size, roll it with the roller, put it around the outside, add in the green as we did before and go all the way through the process and show you how it comes out in the end. So there you go, with a pasta machine without a pasta machine and I think as you can see there's virtually no difference so whichever way you do it with a Skinner blend or not a Skinner blend it's completely up to you and that's it that's the cane finished here's another couple of options both color wise and putting them together with the amounts you have in the middle for this color option I use lemon yellow tangerine Indian red with the cherry red around the outside brilliant blue as our dot and then the new pistachio green in the middle so for this one that's how it came out with a single one and then I just cut the cane in two and put the two parts together so that's what it looks like if you have the two of the um, details in the middle this one for the purple version I've got white lilac raspberry and then plum around the outside I've gone the peppermint in the middle and then the tropical green for this one and in this one it looks slightly different because I didn't get the green right up into the centre so do make sure you do that because um, otherwise it doesn't look quite so good well certainly in this size although when it goes down to the smaller sizes it doesn't really notice so again I put this one into two but I then extended this to long enough so I could cut this one into three so you ended up with six pieces in the detail around the outside so lots of different variations lots of things you can do and I did mention at the start that I'd show you one where I put too much in the middle and this one exactly the same colours as this but I used the whole of the peppermint as the centre dot and you can see it sort of takes over rather and sort of becomes more of a feature of the whole cane and less like an anther in the middle but if that's the look you're going for and if that's what comes out it still looks really pretty and it's still a nice petal as I said, a quick and easy petal cane in polymer clay, which I think gives a really nice look, but a really simple technique. And whichever colours you choose, whether you do a pasta machine and a Skinner blend, or just do what we did, just mix them without them at the end, it gives a really nice outcome. I hope you had fun with that one, and go on to have fun making some of your own. Thank you so much for watching. As always, a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. OK, I think I'm going to go and have some fun and make something using these petals. And as you know, if you've been watching my videos, I will have lots of ideas of things you can use this petal to make, and I'll put links to some of my other videos which show you how to use petal canes in the details below this one. That's it for now. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.